Hello everyone. We will continue the topic classical report events. And in the previous video, we discussed what a event is. Event is always, always triggered by a action or event always trigger at some specific time. So we have always, always two things for a event to trigger event always trigger at some specific time or occurrence or event triggered by a action by a user action. Now, before we start with the events one by one, what we will do, we will create a program. And in that program, we will apply all those events one by one. So firstly, I will create a program. So I will go to SC38 transaction code. Now I will give some name to the program. We all know the first word should be, first letter should be Z or Y. Suppose I'm saying Z demo. Classical report. Suppose REP events. So I'm creating a program to demonstrate the classical report events. I will click on to create button. Demo on classical report events. I will take the type as executable program and I will save it as a local object. I will activate the program. Now what I will do, I'll firstly go to SC11 transaction code. I will take order header table. Now in this program, we will take three input. What will be those three input? One will be order date. Another will be payment mode and third will be currency and everything I will take as select option. I will not take parameter. I will take select option. So in this program, I will take three input that is in the form of select option. I will use select option to give three input. So firstly, we all know for the select option, the keyword is select options. I will create first select option for order date. I'm writing S underscore O date four. Now I will write LV underscore O date. I will go for second select option. For payment mode, suppose I am saying S underscore PM four. Suppose I am writing LV underscore PM. I will take another select option. Suppose I am writing S underscore cut or LV underscore cut. These are user, user, user specific name. You can give anything, but a good programmer always follow the best naming convention. So I am always giving the select option name starting with S underscore. Now I will get a syntax error because I have not declared these three variable, but I'm using these three variable for the select options. It means I need to declare these three variables. So I will declare using data statement. I will write LV underscore O date type. I will pass that data element of order date. We all know that is the best way to declare a variable. LV underscore payment mode type data element of payment mode. Now I will go for third variable, LV underscore currency, type data element of currency. I will apply pretty printer. 
I'll check the syntax and activity. Now, LV underscore order date is referring to this data element. This data element has a domain of DAX8. It means this variable is DAX8. This variable I'm using for this select option. It means this select option is DAX8. LV underscore PM is referring to this particular data element. This data element has a domain of character one. So LV underscore PM is character one. This LV underscore PM I'm using for S underscore PM. It means S underscore PM is character one. Same thing. LV underscore curl is referring to this data element, which has a domain of CUKY5. This particular variable I'm using for this select option. It means S underscore curl is of CUKY type and has a length of 5. I'm running the program. So I have three inputs are ready in the form of select option but end user will never understand this technical name. We need to provide the descriptions. So how to give the descriptions? You go to text element selection text. And I will choose these three checkboxes. I will activate. So these descriptions are coming from data element. Whenever we will choose dictionary reference, the descriptions are coming from data elements. Now, whenever I will run the program, so my input is ready. Now, now for order date, I will only take low and high. We all know this is low, this is high. For order date, I will not take this multiple selection button. We all know whenever we want to remove the multiple selection button, the keyword is no extension. So I will write no extension. This is already covered part. Now, whenever I will run the program, you can see multiple selection button is not there. Now, suppose for payment mode and currency, we will not take the high. We will not take the high. You all know whenever you want to remove the high, the keyword is no intervals. So I will write no intervals. I will write no intervals with payment mode. I will write no intervals with currency also. I'll check the syntax and activate the program. Now, whenever I will run this program, you can see for order date, we have low and high. For payment mode, we have low and multiple selection. Similarly, for currency also, we have low and multiple selection. So what is the summary of the video? In this video, we created a program before applying the events in the program. We created a program. In that program, we have the input is in the form of select option. We provided the input using select option. And what are those three input? Order date, payment mode, and currency. For the order date, we have only low and high. For the payment mode, we have low and multiple selection. For the currency, we have low and multiple selection. Now, in the next video, we will start applying all these events one by one into this particular program. So that's it in this particular video. Thank you.